Hey everyone, I'm Aaron and welcome back to my channel. So today's question is, can I do a reaction video? Can I respond to some of the videos on the channel of Tampa Brad? This is a channel of a guy, uh, his name is Brad and uh, he lives in Tampa. Uh, and it seems like he joined Scientology sometime during the pandemic. And he created this YouTube channel here, Tampa Brad. I was checking it out to see if he created this channel specifically to talk about joining Scientology or if it was an existing channel and he just kind of started threading in videos of Scientology. And it looks like it was an existing channel, but not, uh, it didn't exist very, very much prior to joining Scientology. And um, this is a guy, after reviewing some of his content, I can tell you, he got into Scientology by, uh, by watching videos, watching content from Grant Cardone. Um, I think a lot of people who watch this channel probably know Grant Cardone is a Scientologist. Grant Cardone is one of the biggest hucksters and con man, uh, con man on the internet. Uh, one of the things, um, Grant is known as a sales guy, a motivational guy, a sales guy. And one thing I would recommend, anyone who's watching my channel, I highly recommend watching an interview that Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, did with Grant Cardone. And I don't know if it was the intended outcome of this interview, uh, like in advance on Jordan's part, but he basically annihilated Grant Cardone as a salesperson. Grant calls himself a salesperson. What he really is is a marketing person uh, who doesn't seem to know the difference between sales and marketing. He's also a con man. One of the cons that he runs is that Scientology is what has helped him be successful. Grant Cardone was rich before he ever got into Scientology. I knew Grant Cardone, I met him when I was working in the Sea Organization in Los Angeles. Um, so when I met him, it would have been sometime around uh, 2005, 2006. Uh, the guy was already rich. Um, and anyway, so uh, he has, he has, he has uh, utilized his con man abilities and he's brought them over into the world of Scientology to uh, make as much money as possible in the pyramid scheme aspect of Scientology. There's an aspect of Scientology where you get a commission, almost um, depending on how, how it works out for you, you, you have the potential of earning a lifetime commission on someone that you introduce to Scientology. So someone like Grant who's out there um, utilizing social media and other platforms to speak to millions and millions of people, if he gets even a tiny fraction of people into Scientology and then he can get uh, 10, 15 to 20% commission on everything those people pay into Scientology from then on out, Scientology becomes a very lucrative business, especially uh, for someone who doesn't mind running scams like Grant Cardone. So Tampa Brad is one of Grant Cardone's victims. Um, I've reviewed some of his content. There's one particular video here that I want to review and it is this one here. I joined Scientology. Here's what happened 18 months into it. So let me uh, pop in my little earphone here and uh, let's give this a shot. Hey, what up? It's Tampa Brad and I'm here in Tampa, Florida at our restoration hardware, better known as RH, and uh, we actually have a tropical storm coming in. I'll pause it here. Um, from some of his earlier content, I can tell you that he has something to do with the residential building industry, is my understanding. Which is making for some amazing weather. There's some planes taking off. It's a really cool place to be. But what I wanted to answer in this video and talk about is uh, how becoming a Scientologist is going. So basically, uh, I walked into a Church of Scientology for the first time about 18 months ago, one year and six months before today. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, pause it real quick. I'm, I'm gonna try not to interrupt him too much, but if the point of this video was to give commentary, then I'm gonna give commentary. Joining Scientology during the pandemic is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Um, also, it strikes me that, um, and I'll opine on this a bit more later, but as I'm watching the video, it, it occurs to me, I don't know why he's doing these. I think I have a clue. And I think, I think the reason he's doing them has to do with uh, the reason Grant Cardone talks about Scientology. I think he's trying to use this YouTube platform as a way to take credit, to, to, to hopefully introduce people to Scientology and then be able to claim them as a, as a selectee. Uh, in the pyramid scheme nature of Scientology that I mentioned, um, uh, let's take Grant. Grant, as a public Scientologist, who's trying to introduce other people to Scientology. Within the world of Scientology, Grant would be known as a field staff member or an FSM. Field in Scientology just means the area around a Scientology organization. A field staff member is just a, a title that L. Ron Hubbard came up with that um, uh, 
to, to assign to public individuals who are not staff members. They don't technically work for Scientology. But he didn't want public to have the idea that just because they weren't staff members, that they didn't actually have a responsibility of working for Scientology. So he said, I designate all of you field staff members. So you're Scientology employees, not officially, but you work outside of the organization instead of inside the organization. And the way you get paid is through this commission structure. So I think, <laughs> I think running this channel allows Brad to feel like he's uh, sort of filling the shoes of a Grant Cardone, being an online personality, a social media personality, and also hopefully allows him to become an FSM, for Brad to be an FSM, and to find, to generate selectees through this YouTube channel. That is my guess, but put it in this greater context. Scientology spends tens of millions of dollars and has invested hundreds of millions of dollars in capital um, in, uh, in production, um, uh, you know, production equipment, studios, and, and things like this, like in capital expenditure. To create online media, to create media for Scientology's website, to create media for Scientology's direct TV channel, um, they create media uh, for Scientology's YouTube channel. It does strike me as odd that Brad thinks he needs to lend his voice to the effort, his tiny little YouTube channel with like 500 subscribers or whatever. And, um, and so that's why I then go, why is Brad doing this? Well, he's not doing it to get the word out for Scientology. Um, he's doing it for himself. He's doing it to generate selectees. That is my guess. Let's carry on. And uh, so I wanted to tell you what happened after I did that. So um, basically the reason I walked in in the first place was because I had read all of Grant Cardone's books. If you haven't read Grant's books, they're freaking incredible, powerful information is contained in those books. And so I read Grant's books and in each of those books, Grant says, uh, if you want to, he says one line about the book Dianetics. Oh, that's why. Anyways, I'll stand over here. He gives one line about the book Dianetics and he says, if you want to learn to eliminate negativity from your mind forever, read the book Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard and it will teach you to do that. And so, because I like taking the advice of people more successful than me, I was like, damn, Grant says this in all his books. There must be something. Okay, I'm going to pause. I don't know if YouTube serves all you guys up the same sort of uh, short form YouTube content that it serves me up. And maybe it's just because of the channels that I subscribe to or whatever. But it seems like this very short form motivational type content from people like um, uh, uh, Bryant Goggins. Is that the Goggins, the ultra marathoner? This 15 second, 30 second content that's just designed to motivate, eliminate negativity, you know, get up in the morning and pound and grind. Oh, Gary Vanderchuk is a great one for this kind of content. Um, and, and honestly, Grant Cardone has become a big content creator for this kind of content. It, it's kind of funny to me that Dianetics could be, could occupy that same space. I don't think of Dianetics that way because that's not really how Scientologists, I um, mean, former Scientologists, that's not really how Scientologists think of Dianetics. You know, this sort of like guru, you can accomplish anything you set your mind to, ignore the demons, crush the negativity, all this kind of stuff. It's interesting that Grant has shoehorned his way into this. And also it's interesting because Dianetics these days isn't really a very popular and successful way of introducing people to Scientology. There was a way in which it was, it was back in the days when they were running these Dianetics infomercials all the time. Um, but you notice uh, a lot of the commercials that Scientology runs on Facebook, on YouTube, on the Super Bowl, it's always like, it's always Scientology these days. That's not really Dianetics. Think for yourself, find out for yourself, this kind of stuff. Um, it's just odd for me. It's odd to me to see Grant pushing something like Dianetics. It's kind of weird, but then, you know, look at it. It worked on, it worked on Brad here. Link to it. I was like, I know it's the fucking Scientology guy, but I was like, well, I guess I'll check it out. I mean, whatever, be open-minded, right? At least read the book. Like the book can't hurt me. So I get the book, read the book. The book Dianetics basically said everything I already believed, plus <laughs> gave me the what to do about it. So it perfectly aligned with what I believe and what I've experienced in my life, my what I know to be true. And then it gave me a, so what? It gave me an action of like something I could actually do to improve my situation. And just like Grant promised, eliminate negativity from my mind 
forever. And so after- So I, I, I chuckled the first time I heard him say, Dianetics said everything I already believed to be true. And I had to think back and I'm like, you know, Dianetics is not very intuitive. Really? So you always believed that there was this constant recording of moments of pain and unconsciousness that were uh, reacting negatively upon you later in time and were the source of your negative thoughts and emotions? It, it seems a, a little hard to believe, but you know, uh, who am I to question? I mean, it's made a true believer out of Brad here. After I read the book, I basically had the reaction of like, well, shit, I guess I gotta go see a church of Scientology and see what this is actually all about. So then that's what I did. And uh, I'm trying- So that's interesting. He did all this without going into an org or a mission. He like bought Dianetics or ordered off the website or something. So yeah, this is a real success story for, uh, for Grant. I mean, if, if Grant got Tampa Brad into Scientology, I, I don't know, you might be able to, you know, sometimes people wonder, is anyone still getting into Scientology? For the most part, no, not really. Uh, Scientology is rapidly shrinking. It's uh, smaller today than it was three years ago, five years ago. Scientology has been steadily shrinking since the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and you know, it's got a high attrition rate. But look, Tampa Brad got hooked and um, uh, we can question his intelligence. Uh, and based on some of his videos, I definitely do question his intelligence. Um, but what I, won't, what, what I won't say is only dumb people get into Scientology. That's not true. Very, very smart people can get sucked into Scientology. They've been getting sucked into Scientology for decades. And if really smart people can get sucked into Scientology, then a guy who's about middle of the road here like Tampa Brad, you know, he can get sucked into Scientology. And if someone can get sucked into Scientology just by um, <laughs> watching some Grant Cardone content and ordering a book off of Dianetics, then I think we should use Tampa Brad as an example that yes, there is a high attrition rate in Scientology, but yes, people are still coming in. It's still happening. I mean, look, he's an example. I walked in that next, uh, basically I set up you know, a tour maybe like a week later and walked in to see what it was all about. And so I go in and I'm like super nervous, right? I'm like walking in and I'm like, oh God, like are they gonna try to sell me something? Are they gonna try to brainwash me? Like what's about to happen? What do you mean are they gonna try to sell you something, dude? Grant Cardone already sold you something. You already bought a book. What did you think was gonna happen? They weren't gonna try to sell you something? And I walked in and I was confronted by an extremely normal person <laughs> who uh, gave me a personality test to take. So I took the personality test and the results uh, really showed me two things. It showed me one, a reflection of exactly what I was really thinking at the time. I wasn't really happy. Uh, I didn't really feel like I was living in a way that I should be. And I just like wasn't happy. And I didn't feel like my life, although, you know, maybe externally, it seemed like my life was going. All right, let me pause it here. So, you know, this whole thing, uh, well, two things. One, the personality test. Of course, what Tampa Brad here doesn't know is that the personality test uh, is nothing more than a sales tool. And I, I don't say that to be hyperbolic. It is literally nothing more than a sales tool, even in, within Scientology. Um, uh, Scientology, uh, you know, registrar, sales personnel understand that the OCA test, uh, the Oxford Capacity Analysis test has nothing to do with Oxford. It has nothing to do with anything other than uh, creating a system that looks sort of pseudoscientific that you can sit down with someone and say, this is your opinion of you. And then you do a test evaluation for them. And if the test scores are low, that is evidence that you need Scientology. And if your test scores are high, uh, that is evidence that you need Scientology. The test is simply used as a way to take um, the burden of proof, if you will, off of the registrar, the salesperson, um, and to put the burden of proof onto the test. And when I say burden of proof, burden of proof that you need Scientology. The sales staff says, this test is your, this is your, how you think of yourself. Because uh, you filled out the questions and we, you know, we graphed it for you. Um, it, it prevents the salesperson from having to say, it's my opinion that you need Scientology. You, you, you do the test, you have the graph, and it says, no, 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 no. This is what says you need Scientology. So he doesn't know that that's all part of the show. And then he mentions, I'm not happy. You know, I think it's an interesting, it's interesting to comment that uh, Grant Cardone and people like him, their whole brand is designed their whole brand, their whole uh, their whole gimmick, their whole shtick 
is designed to make you feel inadequate, no matter what, no matter what you're doing or how you're doing. Um, if you watch enough Grant Cardone or Gary Vanderchuk or wh whatever else, you will feel like you are not living up to your full potential. Um, and you know, maybe there could be an argument for, uh, hey, there's nothing wrong with motivating people to do better, and that's fine, but realize it's a gimmick. It's a gimmick to sell you something. When Grant Cardone and Gary V are trying to make you feel like you're not hustling hard enough, you're not grinding, you're not earning enough, they're making you feel that way because they're trying to sell you something to fix that deficiency in you. So, um, and that is also the purpose of the OCA, the OCA test in Scientology. If you're feeling sad, it's designed to show you that Scientology can help make you happier. Um, if, you, if, the, if the test says that you already think that you're happy, then it's designed to show you that you're actually living, living in a fantasy land and you're deluding yourself and you're not even aware that you're actually truly unhappy and Scientology can uh, help you with that as well. So, you know, him talking about the OCA and him talking about him not being happy, uh, you know, lots of people are unhappy, but the OCA test and, you know, people like uh, Grant, um, they monetize your unhappiness. And Brad just doesn't realize that he's a mark He's a, mark, uh, he's a mark of Scientology and he's a mark of Grant Cardone. Going up in an upward direction, internally, I felt like I was getting beaten down more with every passing day. I just felt like I was just getting my, my head stomped into the ground with all the shit happening in my life. And I felt like I was actually becoming less capable as time went on and more jaded and uh, just less able to be like a positive person and able, less able to get a good positive result and inspire others to do the same. So I was learning, but it was like, I don't know how I'm gonna get to the place I know I need to get to in this life. I, I just don't know how I'm gonna do it. Then I walk in and I'm confronted with this test that shows me exactly what I'm thinking about myself, like to a T, very low happiness, which is how I actually felt, even though I would seem like I was happy. And uh, it I don't know, I wanna go, so were you lying then or are you lying now? I mean, <laughs> so you were pretending to be happy then and then Scientology's like, uh, you know, called you out on your bullshit. And he's like, oh, you're right. I'm not happy. I'm just pretending. Now you've done Scientology. Now you want to convince everybody that you really are happy. Uh, so that ostensibly, so that they will now do what you're doing. Well, it's like, were you lying now or were you lying then? Are, were you lying then or are you lying now? Also showed me something that I always knew was true and that there is an ideal way to be. Like there's actually okay, an ideal way to be. Um, this is a very common concept in Scientology. Um, and I'm not going to have enough time to fully flesh this out in this video. It's not the purpose of this video. But this idea of a, a one optimum or an ideal, a perfect way to be. When you get down to the real core of what that means and this might seem like a stretch to some, particularly anyone who's, you know, still has a foot or two inside, a foot or a foot and a half in Scientology. Um, this idea of, oh, of there being one ideal that everyone should be striving for is only a few harmonics off from the concept of a master race. And I'm not gonna fully flesh out how those dots connect in this video, um, but I can tell you that that is absolutely true. Um, and I don't mean master race in terms of white and black or Jewish or anything like that. You know, especially in our world history, that's so much tied to racial purity. And I actually don't mean it in a, in a racial term. I mean, instead of stratifying, like if you were, uh, you could, you know, someone like, you know, uh, Hitler might want to stratify society just purely by genetic race. Scientologists would stratify it in, term of, in terms of capability and ability. Almost like um, a, a spiritual stratification um, instead of a genetic one. And uh, I don't want to ramble on this point for, for too long, but look, the guy's been in Scientology for two minutes and he's already talking about an ideal way to be. A single and, and a singularly desirable way that everyone should uniformly uh, strive to attain to be. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna note that for now and maybe revisit it later. 
there's not just different personalities. There are ideal personality traits that everyone can have. It's not a born thing. It's something that you uh, develop or you know develop the opposite, develop the bad things. But you can also strip away the bad things and get back to the core essence of you, which is all of those good positive personality traits. Happy, self-determined, able to go and get what you want, able to take responsibility, able to be <laughs> ethical. All those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this concept that he's touching on here um, does serve to explain why all Scientologists share uh, to a certain extent certain um, behavioral traits or personality traits because they are all trying to act uh, or behave, act like, behave like, emulate this sort of ideal personality that um, L. Ron Hubbard has convinced them exists. <laughs> Anyone who has any experience with Scientologists probably knows what I'm talking about. They all kind of talk the same. They kind of act the same. Um, so anyway. You can do, whether, you, whether the personality people tell you you can or not. And that's what, I, that's what I saw that day, is I was like, okay, this is a group of people that believe, A, anyone's welcome. B, anyone can be improved, which I've always known was a fact. Always, I always knew that, that there was anybody had the same capability level, basically. They just needed the right tools to get them up from where they are. And so that's what I saw there that day. And so from that point on, I started doing courses. I did a couple of courses that, and by the way, these courses are not expensive. I was paying like 50 bucks every two weeks. You know, I, I'd finish a course every two weeks or so, 50 bucks, like for a course that would give me a piece of information that I could then go and apply in my business or in my life and either save myself. Yeah. So he says this as if it's some sort of a revelation or as if it's, um, uh, contrary to the propaganda that you hear on the on the interwebs, um, yeah, introductory Scientology courses have always been cheap. That's part of how they how they hook you. By the way, in 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 a, in a Scientology organization, there's a specific room where they put all of the introductory people to keep them from intermingling with anyone in the organization that's doing real Scientology. Um, I mean, look, introductory Scientology is real Scientology, but I mean, real Scientology has a different brand, if you will, than introductory Scientology. The brand of real Scientology is you're here and you're gonna make it live or, you know, what is it? What is the phrase from keeping Scientology working? You're here and we're gonna train you into an expert auditor, live or die in the attempt. We'd rather have you dead than be half-hearted about being a Scientologist. That's the, uh, the brand of real Scientology. Introductory Scientology has the brand of, aren't we such nice, permissive, kind, um, accepting people who uh, uh, are, are so loving and, um, <laughs> and willing to work with you and willing to let you believe anything that you want to believe. Um, once you jump over into mainline Scientology, you're no longer able to believe what you want to believe. Let's get back to Brad's $50 courses every other week. Uh, a really expensive divorce, for example, or uh, go out and make maybe 10 grand extra because of what I learned in a finance course or something like that. Or maybe, maybe go and save myself a $100,000 hiring mistake because now I have information on how to evaluate people and I'm not making mistakes on how to evaluate people. And I'm actually doing it correctly based on those principles. And that's everything that I actually learned there. Then, you know, eventually I took the natural next step of... I think it's interesting that even at the lowest level of Scientology, um, Scientology has convinced Brad that it has enabled him to be such a magical, uh, judge of character that he would only hire the best employees and um, never make uh, a hiring mistake. And this is something he, he's, he, he learned this in the first weeks or months of being involved in Scientology. And you compare that to the rhetoric that Scientology puts out about some of its most senior executives who worked for the church for 30, 40, 50, 60 years and how Scientology will say these people um, were so bad, they were always bad, uh, they had so many chances uh, to correct themselves, they were bad from the beginning. And you go, uh, it's, it's just a, a funny juxtaposition. 
Brad's convinced he's going to save $100,000 from not hiring the wrong employee. But somehow Scientology at its highest, highest echelons of management um, uh, has employed just the worst, evil, most destructive people. And um, don't let Brad know about that. It might um, pop his illusion that he's already solved all of the mysteries involved in um, human resources and personnel and hiring just after a few months of Scientology. Going into uh, the auditing area, and that was like a whole different situation and a whole uh, beast unto itself. And that was like something that was really surprisingly amazing. And uh, it, it really took me off guard. So I did, uh, basically, I, I won't go too far into the, into the details because you know, it's not really good to talk about your specific situation because everybody's got their own. And uh, I don't want you to like hear mine and be like, well, Brad said you have to do this. It's not how it works. Everybody's situation is unique. And there are experts that at each church that give you your specific program for whatever you're dealing with. So I got mine for what I was dealing with. And uh, I basically did an action. Look, if Brad really wanted to convince us to join Scientology, he'd give us an actual real life anecdote. Tell us a really specific story of something you were having trouble with. Tell us how that was addressed in auditing and what happened. I would find that compelling, but let's see what he does. Uh, that helped me to see areas where I was not taking responsibility and allowed me to come up with what I needed to do to take responsibility for those things. And uh, it, it, it's going to be nothing but super generalized bullshit. This is what you get from Scientologists all the time, even within Scientology, just generalized, generalized bullshit. It just blew me totally out of my head, blew me away. And uh, the end result is basically I wound up marrying the girl that I've been with for five years uh, and we got pregnant. And so we have a baby on the way and best decision I've ever made. Literally, I've been putting it off for three years. <laughs> Tell us what your auditing had to do with that. I mean, I mean, did you stop using protection, Brad? I mean, <laughs> were you guys having fertility problems? I mean. Uh, this would be a really compelling story if he would give details, but he's not giving details because it's not really compelling. Uh, to him, it might be, but yeah, uh, but really, this is like a very, very simplistic level of thinking. And even though I said earlier, um, very smart people get sucked into Scientology. Once you're in the world of Scientology, you really are subjected to very, very basic, simplistic um, methods of thinking. And one of these things is correlation is constantly um, confused with causation. Within the world of Scientology, it's one of these things where anything good that happens to you is um, considered to be attributable to the most recent Scientology thing that you did. I mean, <laughs> it's the most basic level of conflating correlation with causation. And anyway, I think that's what we're seeing here. Both of those things uh, and wound up doing both of them, boom, within a month of finishing that auditing action. So basically- But why, Brad? Why were you putting off getting married for three years? Well, what did your auditing have to do with this? The way that my life has changed is that's happened. Uh, I have actually basically attracted a business partner who's bringing me a business that's worth uh, about $5 million a year in revenue. And uh, we're, we're basically acquiring that business for shares of our business, basically because he wants to be partnered with me and the team that I've been able to build. And <clears throat> essentially the value of our business is about tripling. Um, and all that has happened in like the last six months since I've really started getting into the auditing and the really hardcore stuff. But basically, my life has gotten really good. And and contrary to what you you know you might have heard and okay, so look, this thrust of look at my business success. Now look, the guy's talking about his success in such general terms that there's no way to even know if it is um, actually a success. But it sounds great. It sounds great. I mean, to me, it doesn't sound great. But the pitch depending on who is listening to it, could sound great. Um, in earlier videos, I have mentioned that the business consulting arm of Scientology called World Institute of Scientology Enterprises, or WISE. WISE is a, a segment of Scientology that has business consulting groups that are designed to introduce non-Scientologists to the world of L. Ron Hubbard management technology. Um, it's, it's supposed to be a non-Scientology-based business consulting uh, activity, um, but the entire thing is designed to introduce business owners to Scientology and get them, turn them into Scientologists. Um, certain consulting groups are like 
uh, measurable solutions, um, MGE, I think that stands for Marcus Group, uh, Survival Strategies, um, uh, Singer, David Singer Enterprises, uh, there's a whole bunch more. This whole segment of Scientology is actually the most successful um, operation in introducing wealthy people to Scientology, and this is sort of how they do it. They put what looks to be pretty flashy business success in front of the faces of other business people who are unhappy or dissatisfied with their own business success. Um, and they give them some tools that they can use in their business to improve things, but then they follow it up with, you know, if you're using all these tools and you still don't feel like you're reaching your full potential, let me just confide just privately, just between us girls. Let me tell you what really uh, allowed me to take it to the next level. And then they pitch them on auditing. And um, so anyway, th and th that is the proven strategy um, since the 80s of introducing business people to Scientology. And that's kind of what Brad's trying to do here, except he's trying to leverage the YouTube platform uh, to do it. I wonder how it's going for him. And, and contrary to what you, you, know, you might've heard in tabloids or whatever, you know, I am closer to my family, especially the non-Scientologists in my family. I'm closer to them than ever. I'm closer to my parents. My parents are not Scientologists, but it doesn't matter because the basic principles work with relationships in general. I love this, I love this. Look, again, he's trying to dead agent or contradict or um, disprove uh, some of the things that you hear in the media that Scientology tears apart families. And he says, I'm closer than ever to my non-Scientology family. Let me be very clear about this. Scientology does not tell you to immediately cut off people in your life who are not Scientologists. That's not how it works at all. Um, even if you get into Scientology and you have family members who aren't members, and even let's say they have some problems with Scientology, Scientology doesn't tell you to cut them off. Um, it, it gives you um, things to do to handle them. And as long as you can get your family members to a level where they're at least leaving you alone about Scientology, that's all Scientology cares about. Um, I would even go so far as to say, Scientology encourages you to foster as positive a relationship as possible with your non-Scientology family members. It's only when the family members are determined on criticizing Scientology or are exposing you to some of the confidential information about Scientology that you're not supposed to hear or read. It's only when those, it's only when family members sort of persist in being problematic on the subject of Scientology that Scientology will force you to take steps to cut off from them, to separate from them, to disconnect. So um, honestly, Brad doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about at this point. He's still so new. He thinks, he thinks his experience is representative of the entire Scientology experience. And that just, to me, is... Um, um, kind of a reflection of the very uh, simplistic and overly confident nature that is um, instilled in people in Scientology. He's had very minor involvement and he thinks his minor involvement is reflective of the totality of the involvement that there is to be had within Scientology. It's that kind of small-minded, basic, simplistic thinking that I'm talking about. It's, it's common in Scientology, even for smart people. No matter who they're with. And that's what it's really about. So if, if you're wanting to have better relationships, if you're wanting to have, um, you know, be closer to the ones that you love and really be able to be uh, in relationships without ruining them, you know, that was a that was the thing that I always struggled with is I would like to be in, in a relationship with someone and actually more so in a business relationship. I kind of like how we thought he was talking about, uh, you know, close, like girlfriend, partner relationships. And he's like, eh, mostly business. <laughs> but I would just end up kind of ruining it, to be honest. Like I would just do stuff uh, and then just start avoiding that person. They'd be like, Brad, you don't like me anymore? And what was actually happening is I was like breaking my own ethical standards and I was withholding myself from that relationship so that I wouldn't continue to hurt them. Okay, so now what he's saying makes it clear the type of auditing that he had. It sure as hell wasn't Dianetics auditing. Um, uh, just to dump some Scientology terminology on you, it would be called quad roots and overts for life repair. Anyway, um, so <laughs> Scientology has this idea that, you know, we are all immortal spiritual beings with infinite power and potential, but we hold ourselves back. And one of the reasons we hold ourselves back is because we do 
bad things, uh, sins, but Scientology doesn't use that word. We do bad things, but we're inherently and natively good. So the only way we can keep ourselves from continuing to do bad things is to withdraw ourselves from that area and also to shackle ourselves to um, almost um, uh, reduce our own ability to, to do further harm. Um, it, it's, it's an interesting, con there's many ways in which this concept actually has a great applicability. Um, uh, L. Ron Hubbard is not the first one to come up with this idea. A lot of Scientology auditing is centered around getting someone to reflect on what they've done to a particular person or in a particular area so that they can um, be more, uh, have fresh eyes, have a fresh view, fresh opinion on, on how to um, handle that area better. So anyway, it's very clear that's the type of auditing that Brad had. Um, and he had it on the subject of relationships, uh, both in, uh, uh, you know, uh, romantic relationships and professional relationships. And that's why he decided to marry his girlfriend. He had quad roots and overts on his girlfriend as a part of a life repair program and also on business partners. So it's, it's interesting how you can tell the auditing he had from the kind of shit he's talking about. And I still do it sometimes, but I can now at least recognize that I'm doing that, take the actions necessary to remedy that the out ethics or whatever, <laughs> the thing that I'm not doing that I should be, and then keep that relationship rather than destroying it because of, you know, things that I'm doing wrong that I'm not taking responsibility for. So basically, that's a very long-winded explanation, uh, but that is what has happened in my life since I walked in to the church for the first time 18 months ago, and uh, it was it's just been a really amazing, uh, awesome experience. So if you're interested in that, you know, if you want to learn more about that, you can message me uh, <laughs> at my about page. You can either send me an email there. There it is. See, instead of saying, if you want to do Scientology, just message the website. Or if you want more information, you know, call the local org. He's like, message me. This is why he's doing this, man. He's trying to be an FSM. He's trying to get selectees. He's trying to build up residual income from introducing people to Scientology. That's why Tampa Brad is doing this channel. I think it's hilarious. Or uh, on Instagram, it's at Tampa Brad and you can send me a DM there. And I talk to people about this all the time. So if you wanna do that, please do. I would encourage you to. I love talking to people about this and it's really impacted uh, me in a really positive way. Oh, sorry, babe. And it's really uh, impacted her there's in the a positive wife. way. So, uh, I really like talking about it and just sharing like my wins. And if you're interested in she looks uh, like, um, getting into it, but it, you, maybe you're, you don't even know, like you're just Parks curious about Scientology Aubrey. and you just want to know about it, but you're like afraid to approach it because of some crazy shit that you've heard. Like just message me and I'll give you are. the way that I approached it. And it was in a very, you know, gentle gradient to where it was like nothing, you know, nothing crazy. It wasn't like I went in and signed some contract that by the way, that's not how it actually works. <laughs> Once again, he's like, you don't sign a contract. Hey, Brad, you didn't join staff. You didn't join staff, bro. You just did some introductory courses in auditing. What fucking contract were you supposed to be signing? By the way, even to do a course, you don't sign contracts. You sign what's called enrollment forms. And there's four different enrollment forms where you basically sign away your rights to ever be able to sue Scientology. You, uh, you sign away your rights to ever have access to your auditing files, to ever have copies of any reports written on you. Um, uh, so anyway, the guy's just a fucking moron. I'm sorry, Brad, I'm sorry, Brad. I don't mean to call you names. But he's like, oh, that's not true. You don't sign contracts. You're not even, you don't even know what you're talking about, dude. You don't sign a contract to like take a course. You just pay 50 bucks, you get the course book, and you go and do the course. It's just 50 so, bucks, bro. Anyways, if you want more info on it, you can send me a message. I'm Tampa Rad on Instagram. Send me a message, bro. And also, I'll put downline. a link in the bio to a very basic book, kind of like a primer on Scientology that I would recommend you read if you're interested in it. I gotta see. Uh, what also, is. if you would please hit the subscribe button if you got some value out of this video. Please or subscribe to my channel. What I said here, and it also hit the subscribe button if you want our daughter to have a dad with a lot of subscribers, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for watching. I He's appreciate like, bro, your I'm trying to 10x my subscribers, bro. Yes. I'm trying to be like Grant Cardone, bro. All right, well, there you have it. That was interesting. Let's see, you have others. Um, don't remind me. Uh, all right, let's see. We're not gonna do other videos. I, uh, right now, I am gonna do some of his other videos in the future, because is Tom Cruise still a Scientologist? This is a good one, I'm gonna save this one for later. Um, 
Anyhow, you know, Brad doesn't seem like, you know, it doesn't seem like a bad guy. It seems like he's got good intentions. I'm sure he feels Scientology has helped him. Guys, anyone who's in Scientology feels Scientology has helped them. Um, you know, as you go each step of the way, um, you sacrifice a bit more of your own um, integrity as you go higher up or deep, higher and higher, or deeper and deeper, you know, into Scientology. The deeper you get, the more you are asked to sacrifice. Um, and if they had asked you to sacrifice all of that in the beginning, you'd be like, yeah, I don't know about this, bro. But um, as you uh, get deeper and deeper, you're hooked. Look, uh, I guarantee you his wife's in Scientology now. I guarantee you all of his friends, um, most of his friends are Scientologists now, whether they were before, whether he just ditched his old friends and he's got his new friends. Um, his business partner, he's gonna, you know, his business partner's, I'm sure, a Scientologist. Uh, five or 10 years down the line, every single person in his fucking life will be a Scientologist. And, um, and, and you no longer have the ability just to make decisions based on what you feel is best for you. Um, eventually, you get in so deep that uh, you, you wake up and you go, you know, no, no day is going to be the day that you want to throw your entire life away. So eventually, you get deep enough that you basically Scientology's got you in a position where you're going to do whatever the fuck they tell you to do or else. Because the or else is lose every single person in your life. Um, now look, you can tell he's fresh into Scientology. So we know his parents aren't Scientologists, at least that's a good thing. Um, but, uh, 10 years down the line, he might have two or three kids who are all Scientologists, whose friends are all Scientologists. You know, <sighs> I always say the worst thing about Scientology is what it does to families. I don't happen to give a shit whether a bunch of people want to believe some stupid shit or turn their money over to an organization that's scamming them. Uh, I've been watching a lot of stuff recently, including, uh, for example, the show on Hulu, um, Under the Banner of Heaven. Uh, the more I learn about other high control groups, in this case, Mormonism and fundamentalist Mormonism, the more uh, it just becomes really clear. There is really no limit to the amount of bullshit you can get someone to believe and the amount of unbelievably crazy shit you can get someone to do based on the shit you've gotten them to believe. So I don't think the crazy shit in Scientology uh, is more deserving of outrage than some of these other high control groups. Uh, that's kind of a long way of me saying, I don't really give a shit if people want to do Scientology. The most objectionable part of it is what Scientology, so what Scientology does to families. Uh, and I just hope Brad doesn't get in uh, so deep and stay in for so long that it has that kind of uh, leverage and control over his life. So, um, all right, well, that's all the commentary I'll do on this for now. We'll revisit more of this in a later video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!